Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Brothers Take Podcast. I am Chris. I am joined once again by my brothers, Adam. Hello. And Eric. Hello. And we are back in the room this week to finally talk about God of War Ragnarok. It's been out long enough. It's a big game, though. You know, you got to give enough time for people to actually get it, play it over the busy holiday period. I see Eric with his judgmental face because he's like, I, what, cleared it in a day, whatever, New Game Plus, did it, done. Fuck Does it have New Game Plus? I don't know. I, I actually don't know. I didn't go into that because <laughs> I, I still have shit to do in it. It probably will. Um, But yes, we are finally returning to talk about this monumental game, which we all called our favorite game of 2022. Um, and it's going to be a full spoiler talk. So that means that if you haven't played it yet, or you're still in the process of playing it, just be warned that this is going to be a full spoiler discussion. And that doesn't mean that we're going to go in order where you could be like, well, I've played up to like a certain point. So I'll listen and then I'll drop off when they get, no, no, like we will, it'll be random order. Like we'll we talk are. about we... any, anything. <laughs> we, like, we don't can work talk about like the that. ending first. Yeah. We don't do that. I have That's to try to remember it first. So. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's why, like, we just talk about what comes to mind, basically. So just be warned of that before you listen to this, because what's the music cues? That is your final spoiler warning. And then we're all in. But we, of course, we'd love to hear from you guys, as always. So if you guys are watching this on YouTube, feel free to jump down into the comments at any point to share your own thoughts on God of War Ragnarok or on any thoughts that we bring up. If there's something that you, you know, agree with us on or disagree with us on, feel free to jump into the comments to share those thoughts. And if you enjoyed this discussion, why not give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and ring that notification bell for all future content. And to those of you who are listening to us on audio platforms, you can also touch base with us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Brothers Take, again, to give your take on God of War Ragnarok. Um, and why not leave us a follow or a review or whatever, if that's where you like to listen to us, if it's on the audio platforms. But without further ado, let's talk Ragnarok spoiler talk. I was wondering what you were going to do. You know, each week I'm rhymes just, there, wasn't it? Yeah, each week I'm just like excited to see. What, what, how are you going to introduce this one? I was going to go, but then I realized I said that the music cue would be the, the final spoiler warning. Right. So I couldn't do it. So I was going to go, Ragnarok, spoiler talk, they killed Brock, holy fuck. <laughs> That's ah. what I was going to do. <laughs> but yeah. we'll get we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, I told you this was going to be spoilers. Um... Okay, Can you kill so what's already dead though. Oh, that's deep, bro. That's, deep. that's some that's some, head, that's some metal deep lyrics shit, right there. Yeah, fucking deep, man. Blah. Why are we so blue? Um, to to this is the way we are. We are blue in memory of Brock, but also it's the brothers take color in a way, blue and purple, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, I think as a starting point, because this game is massive, right? So, just as a starting point, I want to use there was. I was listening to like Eric Williams, the director. He did a couple of spoiler casts with the likes of uh, Kind of Funny and Beyond and these kind of people. And on all of those, he he was told that Corey Barlog gave him three points to incorporate into game, and and then that's it. And after that, do what you like, mm-hmm. right? Those three points were Ragnarok must happen, uh, Atreus must leave at the end. Brock must die. I don't know why those are the three points, but okay. I want to use those <laughs> as our first talking points of the game. And that not just those points, but like, so like, for example, with Atreus, that means we could talk about Atreus's role in the game, playing as Atreus, that kind of stuff. Ragnarok being the overarching story, of course. Brock being not just Brock, but the twist of who Tyr was and all the Tyr stuff as well that led up to Brock's death. Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. So we'll use those as the talking points first. They might be quite tan- tangential in their in their own regard. Um, and then afterwards, if there's stuff that we still want to touch on that didn't come in under those conversations, then we can jump into those two. So why don't we start with, um, well, Ragnarok? Because that's the, that's the game. Ragnarok must happen. It is the story of the game. And then you get to that big final fucking battle sequence at the end. Eric, your your thoughts first, as the biggest Norse mythology fan of the three of us. 
Um, well, I do believe I did say that the game could have been two, but now it's interesting hearing that Corey Barlog wanted Ragnarok to happen specifically in this one. Because what mm. I would have done was Fimblewinter, then Ragnarok. So I would have yeah, made yeah. a trilogy out of it because, like you said, it's a huge game. There's a lot to this. So I do feel the Ragnarok moment is slightly rushed. Mm -hmm. But speaking on the aspect of just the battle, when it kicks off the horn, all the armies, it's like that in end game moment, to be honest. It's absolutely end game. But the fact that it's not heroic, the fact that it has this really sad music as you're going through the trenches, battling the Einar Yar and all the elves around you are dying and everyone's coming in for battle. I was like, I am loving this so much because it's not making warfare and slaughtering heroic because it's mm -hmm. not. And it's the whole thing of Kratos from the 2018 to now is that he just wants yeah. to live a life where he doesn't have to kill people and he keeps getting dragged into that life of having to brutally murder everything <laughs> in his past. So I mm -hmm. like that that's really sad. And I kind of had a reminisce going through the trenches, almost like World War One type thing. Almost. Right, right, right. Yep. I, I kind of reminisced of that. But I love that moment. And I love Ragnarok. And I mean, we can do spoiler talk. So I like that Freyr died to Searcher's sword because that's what happens in the myth. Okay, okay. In the myth, Searcher so I didn't, kills... I didn't, I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, so. right, Searcher kills Freyr with his sword as he's destroying Asgard. Um, oh, okay, okay. So I really liked that. Uh, I, I, And I like the fact that the dead the Draugr, or the Hell, well, the Hellwalkers, not the Draugrs, because they switched them around for the game. I like that they come in on ships, because that's how it happens in Norse mythology, the, the Draugr coming on, or the undead coming on the ships and everything. Uh, the game's very long. Could have been two games, honestly. I will, I will say that. Like, could have been two games, mm. but I did love every single moment of this. Mm -hmm. There's like a few things. Obviously, it was like that's that's a bit. You know, could have shortened that down, or could have you know tidied that up a bit. Yeah, or in some cases, overall. like they could have gone into that more. True. Yeah, yeah there's some, some cases where I'm like, oh, yeah, that felt a bit rushed, but given that everything else is, um. You know, but I, hmm. I, I, I echo your sentiments. I mean, I, I think that sequence is fucking incredible. Like, yeah, I was giddy. I was like laughing, but I, it's not actually like a fun scene. Like, no, but I was just kind of laughing at a pure giddiness of like, this is ridiculous. This is crazy. This is amazing. I love it. But I do, I do agree that I, I do think there's like a feeling of like the game uh, is quite, you know, slowly paced throughout. And then at the end, it just sort of rushes into hmm. Ragnarok. And uh, and like the rest of go right, we'll go to the realms and we'll get the armies. And like I'm like that is, that's a third game. Mm -hmm. That's right Mass there. Effect. That's Mass Effect Three. Now yeah. you're going to each realm and recruiting the armies for the final assault on. Uh, so I, I I kind of agree. I think Fimble Winter. This game is Fimble Winter. Mm. The most of it is, and then just like the ending is Ragnarok, really. Um, yeah. But anyway, I mean, uh, look, Ragnarok is such a great title as well, and. The, the marketing of Ragnarok is coming is so much more exciting than Thimble Winter, you know, which hmm. uh, in pop culture is not that well known, really. Like, um, yeah. Adam, what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree that the like I, I felt it, it's a great game. It's a really, really enjoyable game. But I, I think thinking back on the game, um, there's probably so much in there that feels like side quests. And it's it's just so happens right. to be the main quest, and I would have made the the Ragnarok war like a good chunk of the game. Like I'm thinking back to you know like mm -hmm. MGS four, and, and you're you're going around you're you're literally in a war zone for mm -hmm. like most of the game, and mm -hmm. I th I think that needs to happen much earlier on. And I still think they could probably hit the story beats, um, that they have been hitting. While the war is going on, while the war is on, because right? you could have like uh, it's Kratos, you know, in the, in the trenches as you say, uh, without Atreus, like Atreus has gone off doing his own thing, and you're like, you're 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 now looking for him while in the trenches, kind of a situation, and mm. yeah, I I think like that whole sequence is so cool, 
that it, it almost flashes before your eyes a little bit. You're so preoccupied with surviving and fighting because there's a lot of like heavy hitters at that point in the game. Yeah. That there's all these really cool details in the background that I think you're you're kind of missing. And instead of like the I think the quests throughout the the main kind of quests of the game feels a little um anticlimactic to some like I don't feel like I'm building up to Ragnarok. I know I partially that's right, kind right. of the point, right? Partially it's like Well they're they're trying to avoid Ragnarok. Yeah, partially right? it's like I'm trying to do everything yeah. I can to make sure this doesn't happen, but no matter yeah. what I do, it keeps happening. Hmm. Yes. Uh, but I would like to... I Because my criticism with the first game um, was how mm-hmm. empty it felt. And I really wanted this second game to give me a sense of culture, which we kind of got in Svartalheim a little bit. Right? We see the dwarves sneaking off. So we know they're there. We just don't get yeah, to. Yeah. We don't get to interact with them. But, like, I want to go recruit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I yeah. want to win over the elves. I've been fighting them, so now I want to win them over. Like, yeah. Rather than just, you know, everyone that you make friends with is is in Vanaheim, and then they go off and, you know, recruit. Whereas I mm-hmm. I think all the quests that you're doing in each realm. Um, should give you, um, you know, the, your army essentially, and and maybe you don't know it until the end, and it's like like the end game moment, right? Like Cap Cap didn't realize that they were all going to come through the portals. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that could be a really cool. Like moment. if you, yeah, if you went in like underwhelmed and got wrecked, yeah, and then they sort of showed up, much like like the Rohirrim in Return of yeah. the King, uh, where and then. You know, th- that sad music could have been playing first, but then a rendition of like Whole Devil's Pot of Tea could have came in and, and absolutely elevated this game from a nine out of ten to a ten out of ten for me. <laughs> I yeah, said that to Eric. I said that to Eric. I went, this game is a solid nine out of ten, and I mean that. I I actually do. I think it's fucking incredible, right? I said, and there's one thing that could elevate it to an absolute ten. <laughs> I said, if at some moment, at some hype moment. There is a rendition of the old God of War team. Yeah, in yeah. this game, oh, as yeah. I, that will just elevate it. The first one definitely <laughs> needed it when you get the yeah. Blades of Chaos. When you when got you the Blades, it's like, the perfect opportunity, why right? Not? And yeah. my only thinking of why they didn't do it the first one was, was like, all right, well, the Blades is a big moment in itself. Maybe they're holding off that music for like, so that they can have a big moment in you know the sequel, and. uh yeah, look, it didn't come, and that, it, but it's okay. It's okay. Honestly, it would have been great to play that after picking up Mjolnir because you don't even get to do that. He keeps yeah, grabbing yeah, yeah, Mjolnir, yeah, yeah. but he never uses mm-hmm. Mjolnir. But if you actually just held it and that music kicks in as you just slowly walk towards a bloody bruised Thor and you just start whacking him with the. So actually, that's a point the director brought up as well because he was he was asked about Mjolnir, right? Mm. Um. There was like every, pretty much everyone asked. It was like, why, why didn't we get it? Like, why not? And like, he even teased us with it. Like, like he got it in the hand. Even I was like, oh, oh, here we go, here we go. And then like, he just hits him once, and then let's go over or whatever. I was like, oh. So he was saying that like he was so aware that everyone wanted it that he was like, it was just boring. He was like, if we give it to you, it's what you expect. So I was like, I don't, I don't necessarily agree because I'm like sometimes just because someone wants something doesn't mean it's a bad thing to give it to them. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, not all fan, not all fan service is good, but not all fan service is bad either, right? Like when you're, if you're able to give someone that kind of dream, it's it's kind of like when Rocksteady gave people the experience of being Batman, and it's like, wouldn't it be more interesting if you played this Batman game and you weren't Batman at all? It's like, no, it would be more interesting if I was Batman, which is what I expect, mm-hmm. and when I get it, I'm like, wow, I'm Batman, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So, but that's literally why they came up with the spear. Dropnir was he he wanted he wanted a weapon that suited Kratos and he said like Mjolnir isn't Kratos's weapon but I I I do think that there would have been room for having that as well like I don't think it had to be I, one or the other I know I think you c- just have it for the end you don't have oh it. sure sure just yeah. for a moment just for beating up Thor and then maybe he hits Thor so hard Mjolnir actually breaks and now you can't have that. Would be, that would be that would be that would be one hell of a wall. But yeah, and then you play the whole devil's part of tea. 
<laughs> the other, yes, the other way I around it is if it's a uh, if it's another like t- uh, another rage, um, right meter thing. A, a bit like remember in uh, Devil May Cry, uh, the the various different devil forms give you different mm. weaponry, mm-hmm. and yeah. that could be uh, another one. Um, that, that's the only other way I could think of it. But I, I feel like it's probably so similar to the Leviathan Axe in general. In its uh, ability, right? Well, I think that was another reason. I think he was saying, "Well, look, the the hammer is Thor's. The axe is for Kratos, and the axe mm. is designed to be the foil of Mjolnir." <laughs> that, that's... that's like uh, that one of my favorite dialogues in the game is when uh, Atreus is asking you, like, "What's your favorite weapon?" and and Kratos is oh. like, um, uh, "I don't have a favorite. They're they're all tools that serve a different purpose." <laughs> and Atreus is like, "I like the axe," and he's like. I too like the axe. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, okay. So, what is actually what is your favorite weapon? Um, yeah, the, the axe for me. Kratos is the axe. Yeah, probably probably the axe or the um. I I I thought the blades of chaos. I I ended up using them quite a bit in this one, mm-hmm. more so than the first one even. Uh, just because it, it was some serious crowd control. Yes, it was. Yeah, yep. Yeah, so I I. Yeah. I'm going to say the axe as well, but then I would say the spear, right? Wow. And for me, I use the swords a lot. Don't get me wrong, but it was just that. I, I The swords uh, in this game had no character to me. Like, they were just they were just tools, exactly mm. as Kratos says, and they were very useful. But the axe and the spear had real character to them. And I found that I kind of used them more in other... Like, I mean, the only thing I used the swords for, really, apart from, like, swinging across things is burning bushes whereas mm. the axe gets used in an awful lot of puzzles and then once drop near comes into it that gets used in a lot of puzzles too and i thought it made combat so fucking fun i really enjoyed i couldn't that get weapon. into the rhythm of the spear okay. at all like uh, mm. with the with the axe you know like he, the, we, even with this the tax where he kind of throws it and it comes back like a boomerang a little bit yeah, uh, and then the swords. There's a good kind of flowy rhythm to it. But the, the spear, I'm like, I'm not sure. Like, I mean, am I better off like attacking with this thing, or am I better off throwing this thing and just using the? But that felt really slow in comparison to the. I just felt the um, the anime. I felt like Aerith, you know. I, I that's. I felt like right, oh, right. I wasn't. I wasn't actually powerful, and um, I didn't know whether I was actually doing enough damage that I. Tend not to use a. I I actually found the spear to be visually cool, but a very underwhelming weapon. Even as far as the uh, its role in the story, like the why right. they made it, I was like, that's not what I would. <laughs> that's interesting. It didn't, I, I, it didn't I, seem like a solution to the problem. Actually, I, that's that's interesting. I felt the total opposite. So I, I totally disagree with you on that because for, for my experience now, because not only did I feel really powerful whenever I used a spear because I'd chuck a load of them around and then explode them all at once and fucking fuck loads of people up, right? But I was like, like the first one, it was just the ring that kind of copied itself or whatever. I was like, I don't see like what they're going to do with this. I don't see how this as a mechanic is going to beat Heimdall who sees everything that's coming. And then when it's the spear and when I saw like what you could do with the spear, I was like, Oh, okay, I get it. Like, this weapon is unpredictable. And the only way to beat someone who predicts everything is with something totally unpredictable. So, like, the moment in the fight when it really highlighted, I suppose, when he catches the fucking spear and then it blows his arm off, I was like, amazing. (laughs) Like, yes. Like, I thought it worked so well. So, for me, it worked. Eric, what did you think? I was... I loved that I got a spear because I love spears. I'm like, games need more spears in them, right? Well, plus he's a Spartan. I plus he's yeah, a Spartan. He does say that, that yeah. Uh, then throwing and exploding, I decided as okay, it's a it's a function like the fire with the with the cast blades or throwing the axe and it coming back. Yeah, it's a special feature. But I was a little bit like on on the side of that, where I was like, oh, okay, how does how does this how does this help? And for some reason, I thought to myself, ah, this really strong runic attack that I got, right, which you don't have to have equipped or right. use at all. But I thought to myself. This is how we're going to beat Heimdall. It's the one where you you throw it in the air, and then it multiplies oh, yeah, and cool. comes raining down. Yeah. Now yeah, in my yeah, head, yeah. I was a bit like, which is sick. Which is it sick. is sick. In my head, I was thinking, well, actually, I think that's like 
the first runic one you get with drop near anyway mm-hmm. so i think everyone and i think it's like the only one you get for ages so it's like that's kind of how you're going to do it you are going to have to use that because that's going to be really unpredictable so i tried that in the fight and he dodged it i was like how how would you dodge this? <laughs> it yeah. took me ages to figure out how to fucking take him down. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. probably my issue with the the spear as a solution is that uh, it's not really explained to Kratos how that is. You know what I mean? I like, you. like it's like like the, you still have to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. when you have it, it right? wasn't yeah, like I, I, I get, I we get have the mean. weapon that's clearly the one to to defeat him. But it's like, but how though? You know, like mm, if that right, was, right. if that was explained, that even you know, even in combat, you're trying to work towards achieving that, and it in Heimdall obviously is making that incredibly difficult. Like that's mm-hmm. the challenge is trying to achieve this yep. one particular thing. It just seemed a bit fluky, actually, the the way the fight. Right, kind of right, out. like an element of chance to it, right? Yeah, I get, I get, I get where you're coming from. Um, what do you guys think of Heimdall actually? Uh, since we mentioned him, oh, he's and so his, cool, such a prick. His, his, his death is what reigns Ragnarok, right? Mm. Yeah. I I love him. Like, the moment he picked up Atreus at the wall, which, at first of all, I thought was a real tense moment. Yep. And I really thought he was going to drop him. And, it, like, it really... I was kind of on mm. the edge of my seat. At that. I thought that was a really great scene. But then, like, all throughout the sequences, it was like, not only... Like, once I found out he was Heimdall, not only is he obviously so different to, like, MCU Heimdall, so I was able to totally separate... You know, because there's that thing of like some characters become what you envision because of their pop culture status or whatever, right? Um, but he reminds me of like the Greek pantheon. I was about to say, he, uh, yeah, he's like he he's, like he's straight god. out of he's straight out of the old gods. Where when I played as Kratos, I was like, I'm gonna fucking kill you because I fuck. Oh, you're so annoying. You're so poncy. I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, so, yeah. Most most people compared Heimdall to Hermes. Yeah, because yes. they were both just so yeah. yeah up their own hole and annoying. So not only was he annoying, and you kind of felt like like if this was a guy you met in real life, it was like, I could take him out with one punch. But because of his ability, he was actually really hard to hit. But he would also fucking annoy you to the heavens. So like that made him more annoying that you're like, I want to hit you, but I can't. <laughs> so I just I, I thought they um they handled him really well. Yeah. I loved a bit with Thor. And Thor threatens him and he's like, How are you gonna hit me? He's like, Look in my eyes, you tell me. I was just like, I love that ah! you don't you don't know what he's thinking, but the yes. fact that it's enough for Heimdall to go, you sick bastard, and drop the arrow. I was like, <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric, uh, as the biggest again, as the biggest Norse fan out of us, but what did you think of Heimdall? I really liked Heimdall. I did. I really liked him. mainly because he's a annoying, poncy prick, and yeah, you just want to yeah. hit him. But I was thinking, Treda, I was like, surely you'd be able to hit him when he's distracted by someone else. All right, because yeah. he sees people's intentions, not specifically the future. Oh, do you think then, like the key to the fight, really would have been because the Trace and Kratos kept spending so much time away from each other? The key was they need to come back and take them on together. I no, not Is necessarily, or... but I was kind of hoping that Atreus would kill him because in Norse mythology, Loki kills Heimdall. So I was hoping All right. that by Kratos distracting Heimdall, Atreus would come back and shoot him in the back with an arrow or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or stab yeah. him with his own sword. I don't know. But yeah, he was so cool. <laughs> I, do, I do like that um, uh, with a lot of the what they're playing around with, like the character of Loki. Mm. I do like that he he kind of unknowingly does some of the things from like the myth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's not so in, in in someone else's telling, it could be this mischievous god named Loki came and brought Ragnarok on Asgard and fucking, you know, had a child that was a giant snake and shit. And then this is like, well, this is how it really happened. And actually, he was just sort of like chancing on these things. And going, oh, yeah. I should I should help. And oh, fuck, I made shit worse, you know. <laughs> and that's yeah. how it's kind of like, I kind of like that perspective on it, you know. Yeah. And he's lying Tredus to Odin and all of them, right? and to Kratos that everybody's lying but he's only lying because he thinks it's the best thing to do rather than just being but as a result he's causing mischief everywhere yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it is so a really he... good it is a really good telling of him yeah. yeah well well, it's the it's like they've taken the the characteristics of Loki the trickster god and went well it's adolescence like it's pure mm-hmm. like what do teenagers do teenagers lie all the time like <laughs> you know they say they're one place but they're actually somewhere else because they're afraid of getting in trouble or whatever hmm 
Yeah. Sorry, yeah. the two of you froze on me for a second, and I was like, oh, God. I was just doomed the whole That's thing. That's Fimble Winter for you. <laughs> oh. Well, we mentioned Loki, mm. Atreus. Um, do you tend to call him Atreus, or do you tend to call him Loki after this game? Atreus. Wow. Yeah, he's still kind of Atreus at the moment. Yeah, he's Atreus, true and true, really. Yeah, yeah. he's I'm like hoping... he's playing the role of Loki, but he is Atreus. Yeah. I'm hoping now that he's gone off with anger, Boda, at the end of the game, mm. that he will start referring to himself as Loki in the next games. And become more Next right. Ooh. optimistic. Yeah, there's got to there's got to be more story to tell there, though, right? There's no way this is it. I'm not gonna lie. If this is it, slightly underwhelming. Oh, if this is it, it is definitely an underwhelming ending. I would say. Yeah. Hmm. I f- I feel I, like it could be. For Norse mythology, yes. For these characters going into other myths, I don't think so. <laughs> What's left to take on? Yeah, Egypt is next, right? I know, oh. but, I, but it's just like... But then that's expected, so they'll probably not do that. Well, it's not like... just that, right? I mean, in, in the <laughs> Egyptian... Like, okay, I'm not I'm not a fucking theologian, but... But um, the Egyptian gods are not quite like the Greek, Roman, or, or Norse ones. True. Right, where they're like in Greek and Norse, it's like they're very human, right? It's like these are both pricks, but I can also see why you know if I worship hmm. you, this could do me a favor. Egypt is not like that. Egypt is like there's a good god and then there's a bad god, and that's that's it. And then there's all the other ones, and you don't yeah. hear about them. <laughs> they're, well, the, well, they're more, they're just functional. They're not like yeah. The one, see, the the one thing I would say though is that like, because in some ways, like I I love the interpretations of like the Norse characters that they've done here. Yep. Um, in both these games, like I do think Ragnarok is more of an exploration of Norse mythology than even 2018 was, right? So, and I yeah. quite like it for that reason. Hmm. Um, but there is an element of it's like, well, I have an idea of the myth, so I, I see where this is going, and I know where that's going to go, and I'm kind of going through the motions a little bit. With the Egyptian mythology, it, there's fuck all written about it, because most of it was on the walls and got knocked down, and like they didn't write down on paper <laughs> hmm. their myths, right? So there's lots of confusion with it. As a result, there's a lot more freedom. Yeah, do what you want. Do what you want with them. Take Horus and do whatever the fuck you want, you know? So that's yeah, all I would like, say. I'm kind of thinking that they could do things because they always have that idea where they get the sort of good gods of these mythologies right. and twist them into being these evil, more sadistic or corrupt do you versions. Your animal hells, so, though, you know what I mean? Like, it's just. Yeah! Well, there's like, that's what I mean. There's yeah. like, there's. I know, I know what you're saying, but I, yeah, I think go weird. <laughs> yeah, go fucking weird. weird. But what they could do is have that actually Horus killed Osiris and then. Framed Set, so everyone hates Set, and Set is viewed as the evil god, but it actually and he's not Horus. at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Horus has now taken over all of Egypt and all the gods. Yeah, you could absolutely him. do that. You like, you can do Os- what you want with them. Who's Os- gonna Osiris. go? Yeah, you're you've offended me because you've well, got the Egyptian offense, gods it's just wrong more like or... uh, what's, no, I know. what's within character. And I'm wondering if there's probably uh, in in either African or uh, Asian mythology is there stuff that could be explored or south american yeah well you know uh, like uh, yeah Az- aztec gods and shit yeah that could be cool hindu gods could be fucking awesome you yeah, know and yeah. i mean ancient hindu World gods Ganesh. not like not not actual like modern hinduism but like uh, like ancient hindu myths and stuff like, Azur- like azura's wrath but <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so I, I i do think there's roads that could go down but yep. continuing with the characters like kratos and atreus and that kind of thing but um speaking on atreus and that was one of the points that Cory Corey barlog passed on derek williams that atreus must leave at the end whatever that means um first of all what do you think of him in this game and I suppose in particular, the fact that we play as Atreus in this game. Uh, I I liked him. I really liked him. I liked his motivation. Because his motivation for trying to find out more about himself and his people. Mm-hmm. Which is a very adolescent thing to do. When you're, you know, he's very rebellious. Again, like we said, he's rebellious and he's lying. But he thinks he's doing the right thing. And then all of a sudden, um, I, a, I did it's like... It's in my, his nature, right? Like, yeah. If he if he followed orders all the time, it would just be wrong. <laughs> yes, 
and, yeah. and it would make good it, it's good contrast between the two characters it creates that natural um conflict between mm. the parent and the child that being rebellious the fact that he's at that age now to be even more rebellious playing as him i i was like this is so cool at first but then the more i was like getting really bored of this bow right now kind of wish i could actually use that sword you know when you get the sword oh, Ingrid, sure yeah I, yeah I, I was like oh cool now the melee attacks her with a sword and yeah, nope, yeah he's still yeah, using yeah. his bow and i was like why are you using a bow and why is this bow impervious to everything <laughs> it never breaks yeah um, yeah but I know I did like him. I liked that way of uncovering one half of the story and then Kratos uncovering another half of the story. And so you're getting the full picture. Cool. And you're see- and then it was a good way to show the gods in a new light other than just butchering and killing old. Because that's one thing in the Greek mythology. You don't really get a sense of how the gods work or interact or how they treat each other or something like that. You know, because you're just you're too busy killing them. So at least in this with Atreus, you can. Well, the well, free was was robbed from them, wasn't it? So, sorry, sorry, I missed some of that only because you froze for me. But I think it's my internet. So apologies, guys, oh. if at any point I like um don't hear you or if I like I'm in the middle of talking and my, I get all choppy or whatever. It's it, I think it's my internet. He didn't freeze for you, Adam, did he? No. Yeah. So it's it's it's, it's me. So apologies about that. But it's um, not I, you. It's me. It's me, okay? I'm the problem. But I totally agree with you on your point about the sword, by the way, because I, when uh, when you get the sword, I also thought, cool, I get to use the sword. And it's very different to the Blades of Chaos, which are like really, like, you know, like butcher's blades, like really hmm. hefty blades. This was a real thin, kind of elegant sword. I expected kind of fast combat with it, you know? Hmm. And uh, when he doesn't actually use it, I was like, oh, man. Um... But I loved playing as Atreus. Adam, what do you think? I did not. Uh, I like the oh, yeah, story okay, okay. beats. <laughs> it's like yes, every time yeah. I go to Atreus, like, it's weird, right? So Kratos is like the the main dude you play as, right? That's that's like, let's say the jewel of this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's the main, the main dude. So you're like, okay, I'm going to get great gameplay here. Amazing gameplay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With no story. <laughs> <laughs> then you're brought over to Atreus. It's like, great, I'm going to get some story now. But I have to get through this gameplay. I, I didn't really... Uh, yeah, I, I just tried to run through it as quick as I could because I never really enjoyed... Um, not necessarily just playing as Atreus, just the scenarios they presented me with. I was never sure. so keen on them. Um, I like the puzzles and stuff like that, but the combat is just like, okay, it, it's really, it's not even challenging. It was just, you just had to get through these and move on. Yeah, it was kind of like every enemy just took for ages to kill. Yeah, like those, um, they're not hell, uh, what they call them? Uh, the, you know, the guys who run at you in a, in a kind of a crowd? Um, I'm trying to remember what they're the, called. They're kind of like the broods oh, and all yeah, those yeah, sort yeah. of guys. Yeah, like they're yeah. not challenging. The, no. at all there's just this is taking this is just taking time um mm, right so i i yeah it, it there's it's one of those things that uh, i think is quite challenging to do in a game and I, the only game that i think has managed to pull that off is the last of us uh i wasn't even like with the spider-man do you, uh, do, oh, do you mean do you mean the the winter chapter you're talking the first Last of Us, right? Yep. Just before anyone gets confused, it takes you. You think they pulled it off with Ellie and Abby? Are you crazy? No, you no, know? No, no, no. The first Last of Us. Um, yeah. When you you now have to play as the secondary character, who becomes mm-hmm. the main one. Then they really pulled that off. Uh, Spider Man, not so much, right? Playing as Mary Jane, fucking sucked. Really sucked. Even okay. the Miles Morales moments in that one, uh, not great. Um, Ashley in Resident Evil 4 doesn't work I I liked the the the, the you know you him using him as kind of a, a secondary attack but I didn't mm-hmm. necessarily like playing as him and it's not that his gameplay wasn't good it's just more uh, the scenarios that they it almost felt forced. It was like, we want you to play as Atreus and we're going to come up with a reason for you to have to play as him. All right, he's going to disobey and you run off. And I'm just like, you little shit, get back here. 
Like I'm angry at you. Like yes, I, yeah, I don't yeah, want to play yeah. as you. I just want to take you back home. I'm fucking annoyed yeah, with you, yeah. you little shit. Yeah, yeah. And Sit then, down. We're gonna have a talk. And then I have to play as you again. And I'm like, oh, I'm still pissed off at the first time, and now I, we have to <laughs> run off again. Um, and I would have preferred. There's some <laughs> moments. There's some areas that you get to explore as Atreus that I would have loved to have been able to explore as Kratos. I get you. I do get you. I so I I loved playing as him. His I I don't know what it is. I think his gameplay gelled with me. Uh, I I I found it quite fast paced. And normally I don't like bows in close quarters, but for some reason I thought they actually nailed it. Um, mm. and I, I don't know what I just because I, I actually found him like a breeze to play with. I was like, fuck it. Oh yeah, he's pissed was, like this. Like yeah, really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I also I, I like I do agree. I did get to points where I was like, okay, I miss Kratos. I did have those moments where I was like, I, I, this bit feels like it's going on too long. I want to get back to Kratos. There's, so many, there's only so many fruit you can pick off the back of a yak. Yeah. <laughs> I, and again, like, I loved all that stuff, but that chapter in particular does feel like it, it goes on just a little bit too long. I think it's when you start getting to a point where you're like hunting things down in a cave and you're like, this could be cut. This is not Completely, necessary. Yeah, it's not right? necessary. Versus, like, the fight with the big giant, her grandmother is like, this is great. Very cool. You, you get me? So, like, there's moments you could cull and kind of and trim off. Yeah. There's, uh, yeah, know, there's but... stuff like that throughout the game where it's like you could have, you know what I mean? It's like you're you're going in a straight path and it's, oh, no, there's boulders in the way. Oh, drop down, go around in a circle, go back up. And it's like, that was five seconds not needed at yeah. all. Yeah. Because wondering... there wasn't even treasure that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering if things like that, you see, we're playing on the PS5, right? Right. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I really do think, because uh, I've noticed a, a lot of stuff like that. There's a lot of shit in here that's carried over from the 2018 game, and I wonder if the PS4 is really holding this game back from being really next gen. Mm. Okay. Because yeah. it felt like a last gen game. To some extent, yes, but I also think it was incredible. <laughs> I'm blown away by by the game design, the overall like the game levels, the graphics, the performances. The I I had no glitches in the entire game, and I no, think with a I game this one, size, but I I you but, know it, but, but that shit doesn't right? bother me. No, but but I I know that, but I'm just saying that with a game this size. And where how much is in it? Mm. I think that's incredible. Like I expect some glitches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a very uh, uh, like it's a fucking a incredibly well game. made game. You know, yeah. like it's mm. so polished. Um, so what did you guys think of like the way Atreus leaves at the end? I, I don't like. I don't mind. Like it's Grant. This time I wasn't annoyed. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy, I was happy to see him go. Had my permission to leave. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just felt that was the progression of his story. This, this Grant. Yep. Cool. Yeah, is what I say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about you, Eric? Uh, yeah, I was pretty. I was pretty okay with that part. I think. I don't yeah. see why just... this. Okay, look, because this, this is a this is obviously a pointer, right? That he Corey said this has to happen. Yeah, because he's going Why? to go off because they're going to do a new game. You're going to play as Atreus all grown up. I think it was to oh, make sure okay. it's like, whatever you do, don't kill Atreus. He has to leave at the end or he has to go off on his own path. We've got uh, plans for sure. maybe. I don't know. It's weird. But here's, it just seems right. weird to me. So here's where I come at it, though, right? Right. I agree. My feeling was also, okay, okay grand. That's the problem. <laughs> I think the actual like ending to this story. So like the whole end battle and everything, I think is fucking amazing. I love it. I loved the fight with Odin, Thor, I was all in. It was fucking epic. And then everything flashed. And I remember like I was walking around as a trace to say hello to everybody. I was like, oh, I'm dead. I'm dead and I'm saying goodbye to everyone or something, right? Or, oh, wait, no, I haven't seen Kratos yet. Kratos is dead. I was like, somebody's dead. Like, somebody's got to be fucking dead. And then it was just like, oh, hi, everyone. Yeah, no, everything's fine. I'm going. Bye. I'm, I'm summarizing it, but in a nutshell. And I was like, that's it. That's the ending. Everything's fine. I was like, I'm I'm not sad at all. That can't be the ending. I was like, there's got to be something more to this. Like, we spent so long on that mural and what that mural might mean. And the, I remember Corey Barlog saying, like, when the first one came out, it was like, 
you know, everyone's like, does that really mean Kratos is dead? He's like, is that what you think it means? And everyone's like, oh, what does it mean? It's like, it fucking doesn't happen, so it doesn't matter. I was just so, like, underwhelmed by just, he, he just goes. And it's like, okay, bye. Is it not, though, that it's actually Odin? He's yeah, I think, Odin I think it is. He's holding Odin in his arms, and it's Odin that's dead in the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. But then it doesn't really make sense that he's got, Is like, there anything the, else, Eric, uh, as a dude who's platinum the game, is there any additional, like, hidden endings? I'm done a week. How did I do that? Huh? Is there any <laughs> additional uh, endings? Once you do all that stuff, that's like on top of the. Uh, do, do, in relation uh, to Atreus, is that what you mean? I think yeah, yeah. you can go back to the house, right? And Atreus like left a gift or something. I don't know if you can. You can just interact with. It. I don't think you can pick it up. But um, okay, Amir is like, well, or Freya says, "What's that?" And it's like, "Oh, it's something from Atreus." And Amir says, "Like, oh, yeah, it is from Atreus." Off. Oh, on his journeys across the worlds or something like that. Very cool. So Atreus is going on journeys with anger about it. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, very yeah. Cool. So, yeah, I, like, I, I, I don't know why the, um, why that, that's a pointer. And to me, that's not the end of the game. Like, like that's not, no, the, like, I, I, I know, but I'm talking the, about it. It's a mural that Kratos sees at the end. It's just such yeah. a fucking beautiful moment. It's really nice. Like, yeah, that to me is, the end of the the saga. I like what he says too it's like what do you see and he says a path yeah. which is like like it's a possibility I don't have to walk it yeah mm. yeah but I could become like a hero to these people maybe mm. if yeah. that's what it means yeah. or maybe you interpret it as a tyrant and it's like I could become a tyrant or I could stay away from that yep it's been, it's kind it's quite interpretational I think that that mural at the end yeah. Yeah. Well, I just yeah. gathered it as, um, you know, the. Who was it that said it to him? Was it Heimdall or Odin? Maybe it was none of them who said. Was it. Was, was, um, it it's what Odin. Are you the, Odin, what are you the god of anyway? Like, who yeah. has ever has prayed to you? Anyone ever prayed to you? And. Yeah. It yes. It was like, at this moment, it's like, well, the worship has been earned through, like, the, mm, the through deeds his deeds of helping yeah. Yeah, this whole time well, he, didn't, he didn't go he looking was, for it of becoming better at the end of god of war one and the start of god of war two as the god uh, of war. <laughs> well, well no, i don't no, think no. he was worshipped okay. though he was just given the title well not just that no no the way odin phrased it he said have you ever known that kind of love mm, yeah, for, yeah yeah is what he said right so kratos um like in those older games, like, and it's all very like machismo and fun and whatever. But awesome. he's a when he's a god, yeah, he's a fucking he, he's a tyrant. Like he's yeah. he, he was not a good god, you know, because no. he was behaving at a pure vengeance and anger, and that's all he had in him, right? Um, yeah. and that's the whole message of these games is I must be better. I have a son now, and I have to teach him responsibility and how that to be was, a man. Uh, uh, and... that, also, a great line from Atreus, wasn't it? Um, with w- oh, when he finally says to him, "Yeah, be better." be better oh, it's a great excellent. message excellent yeah um i think it does come across really well in the game i mean that's the story of the game really like because there's so many like you're, yeah you're right like the, the, the objective keeps changing and sometimes it feels like side quests and sometimes yeah. it's a little out of focus in terms of like ragnarok and that but that's more the setting the actual story is these char- these characters having to like become better really and mm. overcome their own um, inner demons and inner traumas, I think. Um, but one thing that I wish happened, I think this is why it bothers me about the Atreus thing going, is because when you go to, and this will lead us on to the other point actually, but when you go to Brock's funeral, yeah, yeah, he I'm have like, been there, man. Atreus should be here. Atreus is missing, and he absolutely should be here because like mm. Kratos is only knows these guys because of Atreus. Atreus brought mm. these guys together. You know, yeah. he, he even he was even the one that like bonded Brock and Sindri again. You know, yeah. he he fixed that relationship, and now, and oh my God, Sindri! Oh, oh well, that yeah. he, he changed. <laughs> it, oh, that was so good. Beautiful. I thought it was beautifully handled. I I yeah. I, I don't know if everyone uh, would feel the same way, but I always thought Sindri was a little bit too quirky, and I kept they kept going on about the cleansiness and the gloves and everything. Yeah. But but then when I saw him at the end, I was like, it was worth it because I see how broken he is now. 
in yeah. just yeah. that detail of yeah. him with no gloves I, on. <laughs> I, remember, I, I remember first seeing you know, that. I was like, completely oh, lost it. Just... It's just when you walk in and he's just slowly hammering away at a sword over and, over and he's out wearing the gloves. And I was like, no, Sentry, put your gloves back on. Yeah. What are you doing, man? Like yeah. your bedroom yeah. with your gloves. But <laughs> <laughs> he's like, haven't you done it enough? You know? Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Oh. That does seem a bit a bit odd that um that he wouldn't be there for that. Does he know? Well, of course he knows. He saw it happen. He knows. He was there. Yeah, yeah. He was there when uh, it I, I I think that's the one yeah. kind of shame about it all. It's like, I think he should have been there, you know. Um, what order anyway. did Corey give him those notes, though? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the sequence? <laughs> maybe it needed notes? to be Brock first, then Atreus on that list, you know. Sure. Yeah. You, maybe the, the events in the wrong order. Well, well, it don't, like Brock does die first, but they just hadn't had yeah. the funeral yet. Yeah. You know. Mm. Yeah, that's um, so strange. Which, so on Brock's death, then. What do we think of that? Uh, uh, yeah, fucking... I wasn't expecting. Wasn't expecting. That. You know, if I was expecting anyone to die, I, I, I wasn't expecting it to be him. I wasn't expecting it to be so impactful. Actually, I never really yeah. liked Brock. Actually, I loved Brock, but I also, yeah, I mean, if I was ever to guess who's gonna die, as I, I actually, if someone was to say, oh, of the two dwarves who's gonna die, I yeah. would have said Sindri. Because of the relationship he has yeah. with Atreus. Yeah, I, I feel hmm. like there's a better relationship there with Sindri. But I actually never really... I, it's not that I didn't like Brock, but I just never cared or considered him, I guess. Hmm. What on, about on, fucking gratitude? Until... Uh, <laughs> well, until the Forge moment. Uh, you know? So good. Then I was like, I felt really fucking sorry for him. And then yeah. and then that happened. Um, he was so excited, wasn't he? And then... And then yeah. So- He's so excited yeah. to see the but lady. But you know what? He's, it is like, not... he's, he's you know he's a bit of a Benjamin Button, right? Because he goes on. He's like a little excited kid. But he goes yeah. on like an L. He's Eric, actually. Eric, you're very like Brock. I'd say you, you know, are Brock. You're some grumpy fucker. Yeah. <laughs> just like an old have man. Have a deed, have a die. A young man's body. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just think the the it has. It's the same voice actor it, as Matthias from Tomb Raider, 2013 Tomb Raider. Is it? Is it? That's what I'm wondering. It sounds like him to me, but I think he's gas all the time. But I also like that it's kind of like you can't bullshit him. I like that he's the one that is on to tear. Hmm. Like, and I like that he yeah, yeah. like, and that prompts him getting killed. And to me, it was shocking in the same way as say like, uh, sorry to keep referencing this, but like in five, when the first time you play Five Nights Seven and Aerith dies, right? It's shocking and it feels that. Like out of nowhere but then you get to the end and you kind of realize that had to happen like th- that moment is just written in such a way that that had to happen someone had mm. to die and who would die that guy had to die because he was and not because odin was like aha you should all suffer but just like will you stop fucking yeah shut up, you leave yeah. me alone <laughs> like you're ruining my plan here you know i really wish uh so in that moment i i didn't trust here at all I, I I was waiting right. for Tyr to, you know, betray. Okay. But I really wish it was actually Tyr. I uh, yeah, okay. I'm a little bit the same because I'm not not at first. I wasn't like not trusting him at first. I kind of just liked the idea of the God of War being a little bit more peaceful and remorseful and everything. Mm-hmm. So I liked that, and that's the way he was kind of described in 2018. So I thought to me it made sense. Mm-hmm. That he was the god of war, but more so in the sense of not inflicting war, but in controlling, of. maintaining, knowledgeable of it, not all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. Yeah. But I was a little bit like, what if Tyr, after all these years, is so broken by Odin that he kind of wants Ragnarok to happen? So he keeps telling you right. not to do something so that you will do it and he'll still help you. Mm-hmm. Even though he says he doesn't want it to happen, I thought it was something like that. Like he was actually working of his own accord, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, well, like, in, what was going through my head is that it, him actually, um, him. It was it, it was like Odin wasn't actually the villain. Mm. You know, I I actually was thinking right. that Tyr was Tyr was the villain, and um, that Odin wasn't wanting this secret necessarily. Although that's in Odin's character, mm-hmm. was more trying to get to it before Tyr does. 
Yeah, and yeah. the only reason why I think t- I-, I was thinking why would Tyr want that was just because they were kind of building up his in his vault. He seemed to have just such a desire for exploring things, mm-hmm. so that he might want this last piece of of, of knowledge. Um, but yeah, I I, j- I do wish it was because I didn't like him. I didn't like the character. I didn't like how he's written. Didn't like how he sounded. And I just wanted this moment almost like um you know like when you meet selena kyle in in the dark knight rises and yeah. and she has that little shift between now she's Catwoman. between yeah yeah, yeah i get you i get you yeah i just yeah. wanted that kind of that kind of moment and then and then make me fall in love with him well, I, I must be naive because it completely blindsided me when he turned around and stabbed. Like, I was totally, ta- I was like, what? What the fuck? Like, really shocked me. But it's interesting that we're all thinking that, uh, like, that there's someone else we don't trust, right? And in your cases, it might have been Tear. I was, like, fully convinced that either Freya or Mimir oh. were going to be the true villains of the game. And I did that think they that were too. manipulating out of their pure hatred for Odin, that they wanted Ragnarok to happen, that they were like subtly. So Freya would have been the more obvious one where she kind of turns to your side. But I thought it was actually just like a means to an end. And even after we killed Thor, I actually thought she was about to turn around. And and then it's like, like, I've used you now, but like, I still don't forgive you for my son. Like, I am going to kill you. This mm. is what I said I would always do. Uh, so even at that point, I was still on edge. Like, oh, is she gonna? And then she didn't, and I went, oh, okay, okay. It, it just is as it is. Um, so I didn't trust her. But at one point, I was with the way Mimir was like talking about Odin all the time and everything, and I was like, has Mimir, like the smartest man alive, is it gonna turn out that when he was in that tree in that moment when he said, "Cut off my head and bring it to Freya," did he set this whole sequence in motion? <laughs> and has he been filling their ears with lore and little bits and pieces? It was like, all along. <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of thing. I kind of thought, like, as the smartest man alive, has he strategized this massive plot to manipulate Kratos into causing Ragnarok in order mm. to kill Odin for pure revenge? And that the whole thing was really just like, uh, much like in Metal Gear Solid, like the battle between Zero mean, and Big brother. Boss kind of thing, you know? But like it's okay that it wasn't. But just I had that moment of I don't trust. I don't know if I trust my I allies. And in a way, that's a good been, thing. That would have been great because you're using a game mechanic of dropping lore as a way to blindside. Because right, right, right. Fr- from the original God of War yeah, game, but we're like... used to all the gods and all the characters being air swipes. So have a Mimir. Unless twists... Mimir manages to like magic a body into existence you just oh yeah no like, like eating no, no. off the tree like it's... i know, I know, I know. <laughs> there was there, there was gonna be no way of course to like fight mimir but i just no. would just be like like a floating head to be like a yeah, fucking yeah, Resident yeah. evil or final yeah, but if he fight. convinces but if he convinces freya that's like if i die you're not gonna get balder back because i know how to bring balder back to life now freya now you fight freya that's the challenge that's yeah, your yeah, last yeah. boss if you want your last boss. Then yeah, you just eat Jesus, his fucking head. Some pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> fighting a Valkyrie again, again. Yeah, but you're better the first time. So it's alright. Uh, just barely. Uh, it's just barely. Yeah. 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 Did, did you fight Kana? Did you fight Kana? Nope. Actually, the new Valkyrie queen. I, no. I gave nah. gave it one go. Um, <laughs> oh, fucking I was, no. You know what? I was I was determined to try and platinum it over the Christmas break, but. <laughs> I gave, uh, did a couple of the the kind of, um, what do you call them? The berserkers? the berserkers. Yeah, I did a couple of them. They're tough, man. There's a couple of others that was just like, Jesus, yeah, I, I need to like up my gear a bit. So I'll go to Muspelheim. And then when I went to Muspelheim, did a couple of the trials, noticed the Valkyrie. So then I went over, I was like, oh, I'll give the Valkyrie a go. Fuck that. Holy fuck. Like, that was. I didn't even get a chance, to be honest. I was just like, oh, I'm. I'm <laughs> Thanks for killing me, hon. <laughs> um, but I was just like, you know what? I, I, it's my break. I don't want to stress out, so I just, just put it away. I think I yeah. defeated her second last, and Hrolfi, the king of the berserkers, was the last enemy I defeated in that game. Ah. Yeah. Uh, what, what did you guys think of uh, just bringing up Frey, actually, and the fact that she does change sides? What did you guys think of that? 
I uh, the natural, uh, yeah, it seemed like the natural progression. She I just didn't. I, I did find out that her tone. Yes, I agree. It's like it huh? almost felt like before different... you finish the sentence. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> it almost felt like a different voice actor nearly at times. I got to a point where I was like, "Is that the boss from like Snake Eater?" Yeah, it's not though. But I did feel like uh, she sounded like her. I'm loyal to the end. You know, I was yeah, like, yeah, oh she... my god, that's Freya. <laughs> I had a moment that where, where it was a bit like, uh, or even Sni- um, uh, fucking, what's her name? Also Metal Gear. Merle. Sniper Wolf. Fortune. Fortune. No. Naomi Hunter. Jennifer. Hale, yeah. Hey. That's, yeah, well, that's Fortune. No, that's no. Naomi Hunter is Jennifer Hale. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it sure. could be. It could be fortune as well. First game to fourth be. game, right? Right. 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 Same voice actor, but it's like, what the hell happened there? Uh, or right. also the Got, same yeah, with. I, um, I get you. I get you. The same with. Uh, what's her name? Oh, well, are she... we gonna keep fucking doing this? <laughs> Why yeah, not? Pretty much. <laughs> Why not? Uh, Kim Kim May guest is the voice actor. She again. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Like, mailing? Yeah, yeah, like there yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. It's very different. Yeah, yeah. I or actually, it. um, and the same with um, oh, oh, what's what's his name? No, no I'm joking. But um, give us the voice actor. So we'll give Snape. you the character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I I agree with you. Where um, I think it was really cool. I think they actually handled it quite well. I did like that over the transition of while you were helping her and Kratos was advising her and basically saying I don't want to kill you, but like I will stand my ground, mm. but I have no intention of killing you or hurting you. And that she comes to understand them more, and I thought I handled it really well. But yes, the tone of voice when she is your ally was was kind of just kind of strange. Like, no, yeah. n- again, nothing to like to break the game or anything. I'm making oh shit, but just like there was moments where I was like, now she seems too friendly. Like we've been yeah. pals all along. <laughs> yeah, I think there should still be a little bit of like, it's like okay, well, that, we're on the same kind side. Of, that comes in straight after you kill Needhog, doesn't it? Pretty That's much. Under, yeah. They're, they're, yeah, 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 essentially, yeah, they're buddy buddy then. Hmm. Which is a great fight, by the way. Cool. Fight. I mean, I think I think you'd be buddy with someone who also helped you kill a fucking bipedal dragon. I I think all the fights in it um are really good. There's but there's almost like not too many bosses, like a little bit. Like there's all there's certain parts of the game where it's like, oh, I just did a boss, and then like you step a couple of feet, and it's like it's another fucking boss here. <laughs> you know, it's like hmm. uh, I barely caught my green health here. Um, well, as a mini segue, while while we're there, um, do do you have like a favorite boss fight in the game? Was there one we that really so well, Chris? We we're going so well. <laughs> we're just there... talking about the game. Was there one that really stood out as like a highlight? Uh, no. Cool. Yeah. No. How well, about you, Eric? Maybe the maybe Grota. Oh yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was just so different. Is that her name? That is her name, isn't it? Or is it Grota or Gryla? Oh, Gryla, Gryla. What's Grota? Yeah, Grota's a thing. Grota uh, is a thing, but I can't remember what Grota is. So yeah, no. okay, Gryla. Um, I actually kind of think, not necessarily that the fight was good, but just when it happens and how it ends, which was the first time you fight Freya. This oh, is cool, like, whoa, yeah, holy okay. shit. Um, yeah. And actually, to be honest... um. See, it's more moments within boss fights rather yes, than boss yeah, fights. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Garm. <sighs> it's, when it's, Garm is chasing you, that it's fucking is, awesome. But even the, the the conclusion to that fight is awesome. Because I knew... Because I remember saying, like, okay, so... Pagan who hasn't... She's just getting through the game. She's getting through the game. But she played... Oh, yeah. Do you, have to, do you have to, like, keep it down? Because she's like... I think she could be playing it as we speak. Um, oh, good, good, okay. But she played the beginning before me, and she was wanting to get my reaction. So I sat down and played it. She's wanting to see how I reacted to Fenrir at the beginning. Yeah, you have no I, soul. I, I, well, I was just, she was like, how are you not sad? And I'm like, well... Like, you are like Fenrir after Fenrir died. No soul. No, it's just Let's like... <laughs> if you're... I get... I, I, Eric, what, like, you knew he was coming back, right? Uh, I yeah, I yeah. knew there, are, there had to yeah, be. Look, some I way... also knew he yeah. was coming back. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I was yeah. just like, I, I, I think you're. Or they were just going. To, that was it. That's how they were doing. There's just, it was one just, or the other. There was just no way. There's no way because they didn't either build up the character first. Then, 
Yeah. We, mm. I didn't get a connection with the dog yet. I know, and I, I know. What you're why saying. would you name it Fenrir if it wasn't going to play a massive role? But the fucking like how they brought it back was amazing, s- ingenious. Chef's, it was chef's fucking kiss. genius. Like that is amazing. And also with yeah. the 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 world fucking serpent thingy, Jormungandr. Yeah. Jormungandr, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was also fucking genius. Subtle, very subtle, mm. but genius. I I kind of wish though. They should have tidied that up just a little bit with right. the snake, because the the bit with Sindri, um, you're exploring and he he calls Jormungandr and Jormungandr actually appears. I think he should have been dead. You, sh- you shouldn't you shouldn't right, call right, him right. like that should be dead. And you're like, oh no, the snake is dead, right? And you're thinking, well, the snake needs to come back. So how does it come back? The yeah. big fucking anaconda thing. I, I get what you're saying, but uh, it, it because of the way they wrote the narrative, they kind of pigeonholed themselves in a way with Jormungandr where they couldn't do that because the the idea was that they had already stated in 2018 that Jormungandr already knew them and had come from the future, mm, yeah. which meant that Jormungandr had to, like, couldn't be dead, really, as big Jormungandr because they had to come back. But it did. No, 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 you don't. No, 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 no. So the one that they bring to life. Right. There's only one Jormungandr, like. Okay. It's not like there's two. They didn't bring it back to life. They brought it to life in the first place. And it's a very weird moment. But Thor basically whops Jormungandr with the hammer at the, during the Ragnarok battle. And Jormungandr, like, disappears. Yeah. He has gone back in time then. Yeah, Adam yes. knows that. I know that. So he couldn't be dead before he's gone back. No, to Adam's talking no, about they, right. They so bring the, the first snake time back to life. Wait, wait. All right, Adam's talking about right. You know when you're playing as Atreus the first time, you're with Sindri, you're going through Midgard. Yes. Yeah, right? yeah. No, and I know. He goes yeah. up and he goes, bloop, 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 and then the snake comes up and he's a like, bloop, 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 bloop. Oh, right? and then know, the snake I, goes. Oh, I, I, I get you. And Adam's saying that version. So the old Jormungandr should, should be, be dead. Yes. And then yes. you go and bring his anaconda back to life and his, his anaconda an- don't his <laughs> anaconda don't his anaconda don't what no no, no. <laughs> yes no sorry you're right yeah and then uh, that's really cool that was a cool moment when you see the teleportation of of your yeah it was fight. fucking it was brilliant but yeah it's just that i i i would love if i had one question for the devs or the writers it would be that because it feels like a mistake mm-hmm All right yeah yeah no, that, I, I get you now, and that does that actually does make sense. And um, my my actual my favorite boss fight in the game, and it is actually based on like there's loads in it that are fucking great and are huge standards, but it is down to a moment in the fight more than anything else. It's actually the first time you fight Thor. <laughs> yeah. Because not only was I like this is fucking epic, right? <laughs> frozen lightning is so cool. The frozen lightning is so cool. The the setup to the fight, even the okay, let's go, you know, and taking him up in the sky and everything. It's when he fucking kills you and then went, oh, no, no, I decide when this and revives you. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> to fight you more. And I was like, that's like something out of like the Rocksteady games. Yeah. yeah. Like, or where it's a game over screen. Yeah, a game over screen. But then they actually like they it's yeah. part of the game. You know, it's a mechanic. I yeah. thought it was awesome. So yeah, that, that, that was like a that was a good fight. But I that, feel like but that should have had more of a payoff towards the end then. Right, like that yeah. was gonna come in again somewhere. Yeah, yeah, like Mjol- like like Thor dies, and then you pick up Mjolnir, and, and then bring you say to like him, a... "No, no, no!" All of a sudden, you die because I think Mjol. One issue I kind of had, I know why they sort of did it, is because mm-hmm. Thor is that he's just the enforcer, but it doesn't fully match the stories Mimir was telling you, which is kind of why I started to think that Mimir was lying about some of the stories. Right, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the stories of Thor was that he was this vicious warmongering sadist. Mm-hmm. And then the version we get is just this big brutish alcoholic. So let's talk on him for a second. Because I think get perhaps this, that I, that's the way he was and this is the way he is yeah. now. Yeah, I get the sense that this is what we're seeing is the broken version of Thor. Yeah. Who's oh, I suppose just... after his after his kids died, after, like. Yeah, but also just after years and years of doing that, that he this yeah. is like so all the stories 
or like there's another universe basically or there's another time where thor is in his own god of war trilogy on the playstation 2 and he is fucking hacking shit up and he's a fucking badass right this is <sighs> make it happen th- this is the like this thor now is at the same place as kratos is at where it's like i'm dude i'm broken like mm. i am bro- but he's channeling in a different way you know he needs to um, listen to some kills which engage it really like you know <laughs> motivate him pick him yeah man up. yeah pick yourself yeah. up no bro. i suppose it's just because he has that line in the trailer are you like a calm and reasonable like you know he has that line where he thinks kratos is calm and reasonable now yeah. in fairness in this norse version he is calm and reasonable but because we know him to be quite a rage-filled man i was just expecting so much more of a brute out of thor i get you and then even the fact that he goes no 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 i'll decide when you die and he brings you back to life so he can fight you more. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just kind of then later you're like, why does he seem different? He seems almost like he's well, lost. The bar fight, I think, life. kind of indicates his kind of past self a little bit, doesn't it? The only thing I didn't like about Thor is his fucking comb over. Like, I, I really wanted to fix that fringe. <laughs> I just... loved, his, loved his voice, though. Everything yeah. about him is great. But, like, yeah, the way yeah, his yeah. hair just stays there like that, even in moments where it should be, like, like... Yeah, move it. My chemical yeah, yeah, romance yeah. would be, like, how, dude, how do you keep your fringe that way? I, I just... I'm all about that. <laughs> how, did you, Adam, did you recognize his wife's I voice sure actor? I did. I love her. Hell yeah. She's great. I was like, hello, Elena. How are you? She's fantastic in it. The second At first, she's... I was like, oh, you bitch. But then, you know, she... After you kill Odin, I guess he's just like, "Yeah, I'm cool with you." Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Well, a okay, too cool speak. with you, actually. Maybe, maybe that's another yeah, Freya yeah. moment, isn't it? Like, yeah, a little bit. I mean, I did kill your <laughs> kids, like yeah, that yeah, part. Yeah, hasn't I, did, I did do that, and your yeah. husband is now dead because of me, I guess. But you look, whatever. Oh, did you actually find Throod in Alfheim? Throod in Alfheim. No, but I did find Cause... Tyr. Yeah, in that's great too. Yeah. We'll get to that. Yeah. But Throod actually, uh, another reason why you don't get Mjolnir is because Throod gets Mjolnir. Oh, I did. And she like flies off or some shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did see that. Wicked. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So they're, yeah. gonna, they're setting up then a, a next generation of god characters, basically. Like the next generation. Yeah, maybe. With Atreus, Angerboda, Throod, maybe, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I want to get your thoughts. Um, on Odin, he's one of the other major key characters that we haven't spoken about, and I suppose like going from Thor to Odin it only makes sense because in that first scene where you know Thor comes in and like first of all the tension between just Thor and Kratos I thought was incredible. I was like mm. genuinely gripping the edge of my seat like this is oh my god I can cut this tension. And then Odin comes in and it kind of the energy changes a little bit, mm-hmm. and I was definitely taken aback when I first heard Odin speak. But I personally came to really like him. But I know he's not everyone's cup of tea. And I'm curious what you guys thought about him. Yep, didn't um, like him when I first saw him. Ended up loving him when I became my trace. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Interesting. Yeah. What about you, Eric? Uh, I thought it was an interesting rendition of Odin. But yes. So I wasn't like, I don't like you. But I was also a bit like, I'm not loving you. But I'm right. loving Thor. But I wasn't loving him. Uh, but then, yeah, as time went on, I was like, ooh, okay, okay. He's playing... I just he's fl- playing, fucking love he's playing happy. He's, pl- he's playing happy uncle. Yeah, but yeah. really, behind all that, he's... He will screw well, you I, over. I, I, no, but I had moments where I I totally believed him. I totally bought in. I was like, I, I believe this guy, actually. Yeah. I, I, I think he's telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I, I kind of feel like... I kind of think he he is. It's just that he's willing to do anything to get his truth. Yeah, I I, I do think it, there mm. would have been a better payoff for me personally if if uh, in the end he actually wasn't as bad as everyone was making him out to be. Uh, it was, right, it was someone else. Yeah, I would have, I I would have picked Tyr just because then God of War would actually be it's it's actually him. It's not. Mm. Well, it, it would be it would mirror like where the series started, which was taking on the God of War. Yeah, you know? yeah, that would have been. So I, I, cool. I get where you're coming Holy from. Holy shit! But what's interesting is the um, the and director you take his place as the God of War of Norse mythology, like that would just be like history repeating itself and shit. Well, to, awesome. God, to me, that's what game. the 
want that game. To me, that's that's what the mural meant. <laughs> I thought that's what the mural meant is that Kratos is going to be the Norse god of war. Yeah, maybe. His but tear is still alive. Tear so. is still alive, but he does. I don't think he's planning on sticking around. No, but I do like that. If you go to each of the realms, you'll see him doing different things, and it's kind of cool. Yeah, they they said you should keep an eye on the poses he's doing. They're very specific and on purpose. Well, in really? in Vanaheim, he's doing Tai Chi. Yeah, I don't yes. understand it. Right? In in Helheim, he talks to the big bird, which I never saw. I've actually seen him in every location other than Helheim. Every time we go back to Helheim, he's not there talking to the bird. Oh, he's hmm. gone. Interesting. He's, he's speaking in giant. Is the big bird. bird hell? Is that actually supposed to be hell? Yeah, in in these games, yes. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. hell. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yes. So hell, hell in this is a title that you were do you get? Right. So anything anything could, could replace that bird and become hell. Yeah, I think um, what's his name? Head head is a velga. Blah blah blah. The guy who turns into a sure. boar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his I name? Don't I, 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 I don't know. I don't fucking know. Fucking weird. It, I think I think his name is um unpronounceable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think he's gonna be. He made a deal with the bird to become the next ruler of hell. All right. That's how I he really got the feel like you know cool. that sh- dude should have been introduced like a while ago. <laughs> yeah, I did get to a point where I was like, I felt like I was coming to the end, but you've just come in, so I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> Like I guess I guess uh, I better just save and turn off now. Like I I was kind of like you know when you're like playing the game and you're like well I better stay up because I'm gearing towards the end here you know mm-hmm. and then you get uh, and then yeah, you play for so much games. you play for so much longer and then you go oh actually no I'm going to fucking bed because this, is, <laughs> this yeah. is not so, interesting. Yeah, I think there was about three times where I was like I'm I'm near towards the end right now. Oh never mind. Okay, but now I'm near the end, towards the end. Oh never mind. Okay now. I'm, Fucking hell! How many times have I going to be near the end here? Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. It, What's weird is that if you check your stats to see how l- l- much you've played the game, like from beginning to end, even if you do a lot of side quest stuff, mm. it, it doesn't sound long. You know, it's anywhere between fifty to sixty hours. That doesn't sound yeah. much bigger than the first one or even Spider Man. Um, mm. but fuck, it mm. felt long. It really felt long. At mm-hmm. times, yeah. No, it did. I, 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 I think you're right, and I think there's definitely points where they could have uh, trimmed it. And I don't mean in the optional stuff because that's again optional, and as much of that as possible is great. But in the mainline quest, I definitely think it needed a little bit of trimming and a little bit of editing. Yeah. Um, there was a an interesting point the director made actually on Odin, which I only found out because obviously I didn't check out any fucking spoiler discussions until I finished the game. Um, so I felt I felt like the approach they'd gone for is he was a bit like a mob boss, yeah. Right, mm. and I was yeah. like, oh, I, there must be a play on the words like all father, godfather kind of thing, right? He was a bit like a mafiosa kind of guy, and you know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, and that kind of thing. So I kind of got the dynamic then. Like he came in, he's the godfather, and and Thor is the enforcer. I was mm. like, okay, that's the so the Aesir are the mafia of Norse mythology basically in, in this world. And what was interesting was he was saying one of his inspirations for the story of Ragnarok was the movie A Bronx Tale. Right? Have you ever seen that movie? Mm. Where Robert De Niro plays the hardworking father and his son ends up doing little jobs for the mafia boss down the road and keeps getting money for it and ends up making more money than his dad and he's hiding money under the bed and everything and his dad's like where are you getting this money from and he's lying to him about where he's getting the money from and he says he's going off to school but he's actually going off to like do uh, little things with the the mafia boss guy and so he was like well De- Kratos is De Niro mm-hmm. <laughs> the mafia boss guy that's Odin and then Atreus is the kid and as soon mm-hmm. as he said it I was like oh yeah I uh, I see that in the story. I don't know why that was your inspiration, but I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a weird. Um, uh, like I think that's why I initially didn't quite like Odin. Like I ended up liking him in the end, but mm. um, is that this this whole Americanized uh, right. portrayal kind of is kind of clashing with Nordic, you know. Like, mm-hmm. whatever, getting American actors, that's fine. Like American accents, all that kind of stuff. But it's very, the way they behave, the way they go on, it's very American. <laughs> and mm-hmm. that just felt really at odds to me with uh, the Norse Well, it's stuff. like, 
it's Italian American, so it's two different cultures right. in a different culture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas, like, if you play like Hellblade, that to me feels very Nordic when you play. It. Sure. Even um, yeah, yeah. dare Skyrim. I say it? I <laughs> got there before me. Take a take a shot, everybody. I knew, I knew you were it going does, there. It does. Like someone had to go there. <laughs> it, it feels Nordic, you know. Uh, yeah, but yeah. this kind of felt kind of yeah, very at at, at odds. Um. Mm-hmm. But I I did like I I I thought his motivation was fantastic. You know the he he's looking for a god. Mm. That's yeah. I it was love fucking amazing. That. Yeah, it's great. so like it was, as soon as he gave the speech about, yeah, it's his motivations. I think that work. Like as soon as he gave the speech where he was talking about how people look to him for answers and great, he provides them whether they're right or not. He just gives answers and then people can be at peace. Mm-hmm. But he went, but I have no answers. Like I just woke up one day, and here I was with all this power, but I don't know why or how. I thought it was awesome, but I also love that. And this, uh, this is part of the ending that I really like. And it could be controversial or like people could really be annoyed by it because of their own curiosity or it's that thing of like, it's like lost, you know? And it's like, what the fuck? I thought you had the answers all along. Because mm-hmm. you don't find out what's on the other side of the mask. Because Atreus breaks it and you don't find out the ultimate answer. You know, the game doesn't try to provide you with the ultimate answer behind the universe. I loved that. Because even I was like, I feel like I'm robbed. But I was like, but of course. Like, <laughs> would be, but also, would I ever be satisfied if I knew? You know. Mm. Yeah. So th- that constant wondering of what was beyond the veil, you know, I think I think that was like a really awesome choice in the end. Plus the way they lit that at the end, where uh, the mask screen light was emanating on one side, which was Odin, and the red flames of the room were emanating on the other side, which was Kratos, and Atreus at that moment was choosing between being Atreus or being Loki. So, I was like, "This is fucking artsy as fuck," and I love it. <laughs> All about that. Nicely done, guys. I think we're getting towards the end of the conversation. I mean, you you could talk about this game forever, and we probably quests, will yeah. revisit it again. Actually, we could revisit it, but um, yeah, I suppose I just want to ask, like, what was your personal highlight of the game? I won't even say favorite moment, Eric. You can calm down, but just no, what was you know what? You know what well, well, yeah, what was your you know what the, pro- the problem is there, Chris? What? You're not, you, yeah, it's like, oh, look, I'm not saying favorite, but personal moment that stood out is just a long roundabout way of saying, what's your favorite moment? <laughs> yeah, okay, so let's stop beating around a bunch. What was your favorite thing about this game? It doesn't have to be a moment. What was your favorite thing about the game? Oh, da, 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 probably. Um, the. The score straight after Brock dies. <laughs> From Brock on died onwards, like the score is so fucking good. Mm. Um yeah, probably like just like when Brock dies and how it affects every character is great. To then the funeral is a be- beautiful funeral. It's great. It's probably yeah. my favorite kind of moment or thing about the about the game. Like that. I mean, the gameplay is class, but... Yes, yeah, yeah. How about you, Adam? Yeah, um... Maybe the exploration. I really love just, like, oh, what's up there? You know? And, yep. then, and then when you go up, you just, like, you actually find a fucking whole new area. <laughs> you know? It's, like, especially um, Vanaheim. Ah, oh, stop it's Vanaheim, like, where I was, like, you're like It's, like, oh, this place is huge. And then they're, like, here's the crater. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. Huge, and then you're I just remember. like, I'm just gonna pop down here. What's this way? It's a jungle. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, here's a dam. Release the river. What? <laughs> <laughs> like it's just it keeps going, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I yeah, I yeah. felt that it was at odds with the story, but I actually was more engaged with just figuring out like, oh, what equipment do I need to get through here? So that kind of. You know, that Metroidvania aspect of it. I just really dig that shit. Yeah, and you know what? I, I, yeah, I love that in the game design. It's interesting that you say that. The director has come out and said he would love to make a modern Castlevania game. He said cool. Symphony of the Night is his favorite game of all time, and he goes and plays it. Every time he finishes a game, 
or to ship a game, he goes back and plays that game. He doesn't catch up on what everyone else has been making and he's been missing out on. He goes back to Symphony of the Night every single time. He says that's how he celebrates finishing a game. <laughs> and it's his, and he said, look at, he said, I gotta get in trouble for saying this, but if they ever got in contact, I would I would 100 percent make a Castlevania game. <laughs> So that uh, with this that. kind of modern game design, yeah, it could be fucking sick. And um, I kind of have three big highlights, I guess. One of them oh, being yes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What the fuck now? Hold, hold, on. I, hold on, I said, what were your personal favorite highlights? That's actually what I said. That's multiple. moment. You said moment. You said okay. moment, man. Okay, my favorite moment then was uh, Ragnarok. The actual Ragnarok, the whole game, the actual battle. Yeah, the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, the battle. Well, it is all done in one when you go in take, so. and the the music is playing and you're fighting your way through. Yeah, just giddy excitement for the whole mm. end battle. So that was my favorite moment. I do want to give a little shout out though to those little uh, books that are PlayStation Easter eggs mm, that you so find great. as you ex- as you explore. I, love that I hope every PlayStation exclusive game finds ways of uh, doing that for each other. I just thought yeah. that was so cool it gave me a reason i kept exploring wanting to find them Mm -hmm. and as a result i kept finding other cool shit too Mm. you know so like i love the exploration of this game and i think the gameplay as that in that regard it's a more fun game to play than 2018 i think Mm. and i did say before that i i think i prefer this game to 2018 but in saying that i don't think anything tops the blades of chaos moment from 2018 like i think that's still the greatest moment if in doing, God of War history, probably. If we're, if we're doing shout-outs, though, mm-hmm. man, you when you throw like three spears in the Heimdall's arm and then blow the ball off and his arm yes, blows off. Yes, yes. That's a pretty good so moment. So fucking good. I, oh, I, I I meant to ask this earlier, so on just like a quick fucking side note before we really, <laughs> really finish. Sorry. This game's huge, guys. Um, huge. We finally got to meet Faye in this game. We did. Mm-hmm. That was nice. Yeah, I just want to, like, what did you think? I was disappointed. Yeah. I didn't like her. Ah, okay. I was like, Kratos, what are you so beat up about? <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I didn't like her well, at oh, all. Oh, sorry, Faye, yes. No, I didn't mind Faye. I liked Faye. Um, sorry, just so many fucking gods with Fs in their fucking name. Um, who are you thinking of? I'm thinking yeah, of thinking fucking... Of? Frere? The brother? Oh, sure. Yeah, right, yeah, right, prayer. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was. Yeah, okay. yeah, I wasn't impressed with him. No, I like Faye. Faye's nice. I like Faye. Faye's cool. Yeah, I, I didn't like her, and I got to a point where I was like, "Are we actually going to find out how she died?" And then I was like, "Is there going to be a twist about how she died? Was it more shocking than we were led to believe?" And there's nothing really, there's nothing about it. But yeah, I, I just thought that with those moments, I should see a side to Kratos, or we should have an experience where it's like, I f- like, I mi- I miss her. Like now, when she's not around, I miss her. So mm. I, I, whereas I didn't get that at all. Uh, I actually got a sense of just she was just telling you know what him. You're missing. What? A mini game with Faye. Yes. <laughs> well, I, t- I think there needed to be a, a bit more of an experience with Faye because I actually felt that. I I felt that. <laughs> oh, I just got what you said. <laughs> I I now realize you're referencing the old God of War games, and I go, Adam, now. <laughs> yeah, I needed yeah. to make Atreus. No, I. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do like that um that meme of Atreus is kind of like he kind of turns out his side beside Angerbone, oh, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. someone like edited a circle above oh, Angerbone. I was just like, oh god, <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> uh, no, I look at I I just felt that. It was a lot of her kind of talking at Kratos and him sitting there listening like a sulky bold child. Yeah, and it's I was like, like there wasn't. I'm much not getting difference. a sense of like a relationship. There wasn't much difference seeing him, yeah, being yep. married to Faye and then him not being married to Faye. I do get that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's how I, 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 I just wish they nailed that relationship <laughs> to the point where it's like, oh, you had now that you have an opportunity <laughs> to explore it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. You know what? This is gonna get out of hand very quickly. I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> Let us know, guys. Did you want a mini game with Faye? Would that make you like Press her more? Circle or did... to nail that relationship. <laughs> oh fuck. Fuck you know. Okay. It's not. It is not. It is not the form of a thing that matters. It is its nature. Anyway. Uh, let us know, also guys. Cool moment. <laughs> Amazing moment. 
Let us know your favorite moments from God of War Ragnarok or your favorite characters, uh, your favorite boss fights, all your favorite shit. Or if you had some, um, you know, things you didn't like about the game that you want to point out, feel free to point them out. It's a safe space to do so. It's not like people are going to fucking kill you. Like, well, you, you mean you didn't like everything? You can like, no, you can not like stuff if you want. Uh, but we'd love to hear from you. So if you guys have been watching this on YouTube, jump down in the comments to share your thoughts on God of War Ragnarok. Uh, whether you want to comment on our own thoughts or share your own, please do comment. And if you enjoyed this discussion, why not give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, or ring the notification bell for future content. If you think we should talk about God of War Ragnarok again and more, if you want us to go into more detail or further stuff, let us know. And uh, if, if we think, okay, people want to see more, then, then we'll do it. Um, and if you guys have been listening to us on audio platforms, you can do the same. You can touch bases on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, at The Brothers Take. Again, to give your take on God of War Ragnarok and let us know if you want us to cover it again in a future episode. Thank you very much for listening, everybody. I, uh, <laughs> I can't stop thinking about what you said. Fucking <laughs> ridiculous. We'll be back to talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just... I'm just thinking of... Uh, uh...